Every once in a while, shopping on Reverb, you come across a listing that just makes you go, What on Earth? Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. This is that guitar. Somebody has converted a regular Les Paul studio into a tenor Les Paul, which just makes me incredibly happy. So in case you're not familiar, a tenor guitar has four strings. So you have the D, G, B, E strings. You're missing the low E and the A. And if I'm remembering the lore correctly, these were originally invented to help banjo players transition from banjo to guitar. And then you've got people that just love playing on tenor guitars in general. Even yet today, it's not the most popular form of guitar, but you know, just like 12 string isn't the most popular version of a guitar, it's just most people haven't heard of four strings outside of the bass world. So you've got some really old ones from like the 1930s of acoustic guitars, but then within Gibson's history, they also have arch top electrics. I've always personally been really fascinated with these like you've got your cheaper ones right here but they went super ultra high end with like an es 350t oh yeah they also went solid body as well there's les paul specials out there and big fancy sgs and that's the best thing about vintage tenors in my opinion is most of them are custom ordered so you can find some really weird stuff out there you can bet in my future museum I'm going to have a whole tenor section just because I love these doofy looking things. However, since the 60s, Gibson really hasn't done too much with the tenor guitars. But I think it's a market that they should pay attention to because, hey, Fender just a year or two ago released the alternate reality tenor telly. They were beautiful little tiny things. You can check out my review and demo here, but they were $500 brand new and now they're selling today for like 12 to 15. There's gotta be a market for these things. So Gibson, if this isn't your sign to make it a reality, make it be. <laughs> <laughs> so this started life as a 2001 Les Paul studio, and somebody yanked the neck off of it, shaved it down, turned it into a tenor, and the results make me quite happy. Because that's awesome that they utilized the original neck to do this. At least that's the way the listing makes it seem. And even better yet, it was professionally done. This isn't some hack job. I actually thought about buying this and using it as an April Fool's, hey, this is what Gibson's doing type episode. But it appears this thing is sold. So the body, it's the same. It's just a regular black Les Paul studio. But they would have had to have refinished the entire thing. Because they had to have added more wood to the body and the top right here to make that neck fit. Because if you look, these are still our original original humbuckers right here for six strings. So normally your neck would at least go to about right here and over here where the pick guard ends. Now this might just be the photos, but it looks like we have an ebony fretboard on here and those don't look like standard trapezoid inlays. So it's possible that they might've had to swap out the fretboard at this point in time. And they went with real mother of pearl inlays instead of the acrylic stuff. But look at our headstock. I love the fact that they actually went through and made a fake Les Paul tenor truss rod cover. Somebody's gonna get this in a couple of years and think it was an actual Gibson made product. But that has to be a brand new veneer, so it's probably not technically really Gibson stuff up here, unless they happen to source it from the factory. They likely just plugged the holes right here because that is a full-sized headstock. I'm kind of surprised they didn't go all out and do a Gibson Mother of Pearl logo. I mean, if I was doing everything else to this, I would have. And then surprisingly, they went for Godo tuners. I probably would have put something a little bit more traditional on here, either Clusons or Grovers. But in this whole process, we still kept the original serial number. So that's what's beautiful about this. I mean, somebody will get confused on this guitar at one point in time. And hey, maybe that's why you're watching this 22 year old video. And looking at the back, they went with white back plates and everything looks so smooth back here. They did a great job shaving the body down just a little bit more right here because normally it would have came up like that. So they almost access heel carved it, but not exactly. If I was custom commissioning this, I probably would have had them shave that heel and stuff down. But maybe there was another reason that they couldn't do that. So yeah, what a, a weird quirky guitar. Here's my biggest gripe with it though. It's the pickups. They didn't change them for true tenor pickups. And if we go back to these vintage ones, they didn't necessarily shrink the bodies down on these like Fender did with the recent tenor telly series. They still used regular pickups as far as I'm aware, but they put special covers on the pickups so that you don't have the other pole pieces being exposed. And that just adds to the lovely goofiness of these guitars. And like here, you can see the ABR1 bridge. They just didn't put any saddles in right here. And that Vibrola unit, it's just the same as the six string variation. However, take a look at one of these old specials. They would actually cap off the additional pole piece holes right here with Mother of Pearl. So I would have loved to have seen them do like a custom cover over that because they did almost everything else perfectly and easy enough to do. You could remove the saddles out of these ones to 
fully complete that vintage aesthetic. So how much was this weird conversion? $2,200 plus $100 shipping. I honestly thought it was going to sit on the market longer than that, and I was going to be able to pick it up for $1,500 just for fun. <laughs> but no, it ended. Probably sold in their shop. I mean, that is cool. There are tenor guitar players out there, and as far as Les Pauls go, you generally don't find a full-on maple top Les Paul anywhere in the tenor format. Not at the time of recording, anyways. I would love to see an R9 reissue done up like this, though. However, in my requests to the Made to Measure program, they didn't seem to want to build them. So, we'll see. We'll see. But what if I told you there was not one, but two Madman conversions listed by Thunder Road Guitars? This one's a 2006 Les Paul Studio, also in white finish this time, converted to Mando Cello. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I hear Mando Cello, my mind just goes to a blank because I don't listen to music that has this kind of stuff in it. So I'm like, what, what on earth is that? A mandolin mixed with a cello? Kind of. Think of it this way. Right here on the screen, you see a buckethead Les Paul. It's oversized, it's baritone scale length. A Mando Cello is a buckethead Les Paul in mandolin format. It's a bigger baritone scale length mandolin. It's the, the gist that I'm getting. So yeah, baritone mandolin in Les Paul format. It kind of just looks like one of those Les Paul bass and they blacked out everything. Looks like they also swapped out our pickups on these for some selects. I'm not sure how good those pickups are, but the pull pieces likely wouldn't have been correctly aligned with the original humbuckers. But the whole black and white vibe here with the ebony fretboard, now that's probably stock this time because you can find Arctic White Les Paul Studios in this era with that. And you know, from far away, it doesn't look too half bad. So why did the neck need to be removed? Well, look right here. They did actually have to shave the neck down, I don't know, what, eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more than that, just to make it a little bit more comfortable to play. They didn't have to do that, but it definitely makes the guitar look a little bit more legit in that aspect. So as far as specs go, it's still the 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length, but that nut is measuring 1.5 inches. So yeah, they shaved off about 0.2 inches. So it's kind of like one of those really skinny nut SGs from the 70s, and then it just gradually gets larger there. And it doesn't really look like they changed too much about the neck profile. They might have slimmed it down a little bit at the first fret, but that's still pretty chunky by the 12th. And oh, that tailpiece is a 12 string tailpiece. Interesting. So they could get the spacing right for all that. And what's even better about this one is on the back, they decided to put a stinger on it, which is always a nice touch, although this is more of a blunted stinger. So whether they did that for cosmetic reasons, or maybe there's a repair under the whole refinish that they did, I'm not sure. I don't even really understand why they would have had to have taken the neck off of this one if they're just shaving it down a little bit. But just like the other one, it does have an official headstock that says Les Paul Mando Cello. <laughs> I love it. Those are the ultimate troll models. Like you could just take these things out on stage and say, oh yeah, it's a real thing. You haven't heard of the Les Paul Mando Cello and his brother, the Les Paul Tenor? Come on, man. I thought you loved Gibsons. <laughs> So at the time of recording, the mandocello is still here. The tenor, apparently gone. So yeah, Thunder Road Guitars. I would love to know who traded these things in at your store because they must have been quite the fascinating musician that needed a whole bunch of instruments in their arsenal that were a little bit less than usual. I'm not sure if there would be a market for a mandocello within Gibson's family of brands, but I know they could sell the crap ton out of the tenor ones just because collectors like weird stuff like that. And because there are tenor players out there yet today. But since we have a little bit of time left today, let's take a look at a few more. Here's a 2019 Gibson Firebird 1 on eBay for about 1300 bucks. This one just looks absolutely fantastic because I love the custom pick guard they put on here. It's like being at the lake directly at sunrise or sunset. It's got the orange going over the water. It's multi multi ply. This whole look makes this simple guitar so much fancier. And I love the fact that this is like highlighting the waves with that color. And the center of this particular Firebird is a little bit lighter in color because of the mahogany being a brighter shade as compared to the wings that they put on the side. Then you move on to the headstock. I'm not sure if it works as well on the Gibson truss rod cover, but hey, it's kind of cool. Then you switch over to the backside and you can see they actually upgraded the tuners to vintage style ones, which is always a great modification if you're trying to make it look older. And it looks like they they might have replaced the pickup. Generally, Firebird pickups don't have the pull pieces exposed, so that just might be like a Les Paul Deluxe mini humbucker. And lastly, let's look at this interesting modified Les Paul. Now, it's modified in the sense that it's been modified, but this came from the factory like that. This is another one of those 
crazy music zoo custom orders going on here. So we've got a humbucker P90 combination in a Les Paul, kind of like a BFG, but this one has super vintage vibes to it. So it looks just way completely different. Then you've got the historic ABR1 bridge with a Bigsby B7 drilled into here. I don't know why that looks so way different than normal. Maybe it's because we're missing the pick guard right here. So it really emphasizes just the bridge pickup and how it's been aged because that P90 just disappears. Then you get those yellow knobs that are just blinding. And then you pair that with that kind of dark, but yet still rosy rosewood fretboard. That's a pretty cool combination. I don't know about you guys, but after looking at those tenors and stuff, my whole mind is just kind of warped on these things. It looks strange to look at a normal one now, but our headstock's looking good. We've got the Grover tuners and it comes with a modern day case. So I think it's really the black back on this that really transforms it and makes it look way different. I think a natural back on this one would have looked pretty sweet as well, but this is that one time where a black back I think is best. Or maybe they could have bursted it like they did on that mod collection, Fishy Les Paul from last week. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for daily guitar content, and I will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.